guess, I guess I'll just hold it. Um, I guess it's a good time for me to sort of um, share with you some of my thoughts about this subject. I'm Maureen brought up with the NFPA, National Fire Protection Association. And we're a standards developer who, some of you have mentioned, have provided um, free access on our website for quite some time. In fact, I think we're probably the first SDO to do this in a concerted way. We sort of put our toe in the water um, over 10 years ago. This is an existential issue for many SDOs, including for NFPA, because uh, independent copyright protected sales are a way for us to maintain our independence and serve our mission. So it's really important for us to protect the copyright protected sales of our information. We also are looking for ways to um, provide other uh, sources of revenue for ourselves so that we don't have to rely as much as we do currently on that, but I, and, and that's part of what my comments are going to be about today. Um, but it's also important to keep in mind that we are nonprofit organizations, and we, um, we can bring in business people to help us think of other products. We can get in our consulting services that we might be able to do, and people have suggested we should find other business models. But the truth is, we're not businesses in the tra traditional sense. What we want to do is develop standards and focus our efforts on the de development and distribution of standards. Um, with that as a preface, NFPA has tried to see to what extent we can provide free access both to meet the needs of, of you government regulators, but also to meet our mission to provide uh, safety information to the public. And we have been able to do that. Um, it's not a one-size-fit-all model for all SDOs, and I, I want to make that clear. Uh, but we have done it successfully, and I think it has a number of advantages uh, from the, from, for governor, regulators and for users for the, and, and for those SDOs who can do this. And I, I just wanted to emphasize some of those things because um, uh, Section 24 is very open-ended. It is a very... Um, um, it is not prescriptive other than the, the limitation that it has to be free online on the Internet. And so when you begin to think about how to implement it, I, I think you should keep in mind um, the need for a flexible approach that will meet the, particularly the needs of SDOs and the public. Um, when, citizen, uh, when we have made our material available online, it has benefited citizens and users because um, the government can direct them to our website, which is a place where there's a lot of other information available to citizens about um, our standards, about how to participate in our standards process, how to get historical information about how our standards were developed and the intent of the standards developers in our, basically we have a whole legislative history that we make available, now currently it's online. Um, and it makes it possible for uh, users and citizens to get access to other um, for pay or free uh, services, uh, training about the standards, handbooks that we publish and, and things like that, some of which we get, can get revenues from, others we, that we provide for free. But it's of great benefit. They can also um, register at, if they choose to receive uh, instant updates, for example, when we have a new edition of a standard, when we issue an emergency amendment. Now, that may not be relevant to regulators who, as some of you pointed out, don't update or are not able to update their standards as quickly as possible. But many people who use your standards that have been incorporated by reference also may want to know for um, best industry practices what the current editions say. And by having familiarity with the SDO and with their website, um, they can get that information and get it very quickly through us. So by having the um, method of free access through a website that happens to be the website of the SDO is beneficial to citizens. It's also beneficial to government regulators uh, because it avoids the question of um, how you manage and run uh, access from your own website. It avoids the problem of negotiating and the administrative burden of negotiating individual site licenses with every SDO. Um, the question of what licensing fees and royalties would be is a very difficult one for SDOs and I think for you because once you put up a, a code for free, unfettered access on a government website, you're providing it to all citizens, but you're also providing it to people who might want to use it for other than uh, regulatory purposes and all of our standards are used for a lot of non-governmental purposes. So basically, you're basically funding um, 
the entire cost of, of providing this to all users, not just people who are trying to comply with our standards for government use. So um, that seems to be a big burden for government to have to be essentially um, in, in, uh, include in the cost of, of the site license the fact that you're basically providing it to other users that are not using it for that purpose. Because once you put it up, it's basically available to everybody, unless there are um, you know, read-only or other kinds of limitations that, that we provide. And finally, uh, if, if this is interpreted <coughs> and implemented in a way that's flexible, it can also help the SDO in trying to make this information free and accessible in a way that meets your needs. But it requires some kind of joint cooperation. So for example, it, it, any policy or interpretation of implement, implementation of this that you have ought to be flexible. It ought to allow uh, read-only access, for example, which is what we have adopted now. But we're also looking at ways to make it more, use, uh, more functional. We have limited search capacity now, but by employing new HTML5 and other things that I know very little about, we might be able to have more flexible, more user, um, uh, more usable information available for free. But we would also want to explore the capabilities of those new formats to provide, for example, instant in, uh, in content um, options to purchase our standards for those people who want to own their own copy of it and make it easier for them to purchase. Um, that kind of trade-off might be helpful and, and make it work for us. Um, also to have internal links to other um, information that we might have, safety information, or to other products or services that um, might generate revenues for us. So, and we don't know what those are ourselves. We're not big businesses, so we're feeling our way with this, but we want to be able to explore that, and to the extent your implementation allows us to do that, we'll be able to comply and meet your needs. Um, user registration allows us to um, uh, get names and emails of, of our users, um, and subject to the CAN-SPAM Act and opt-out provisions, which we, would com which we do comply with, it would allow us to at least ask those users to develop an ongoing relationship with us. That helps us, it helps the users as well. It also allows us, and this would be one of the points that I think would be important, is when uh, people come to our website and want to view our content, that we're enabled to have uh, click on license agreements whereby they agree not to um, take our property um, and use the digital content um, on a contractual basis. I mean, that's apart from copyright, is we also, these kinds of licenses are very important for us to make sure that people who we give access to digital content will not um, reproduce the digital content without our permission. Um, so that would be another area of flexibility that you ought to consider. Um, and then finally, I, I ask you to think about ways that you can help us through the way you direct people from your government websites to us, for example. We have for the last year or more been trying to get uh, government agencies around the country to let people know where they can get this material when they're adopting our standards by reference. And, you know, understandably, in a world of tight budgets, there's some inertia on that point. But what if there were links directly from websites at the appropriate points to um, the places where you could see SDO material for free? Um, and what about some kind of messaging that would educate and help us educate uh, users about how to get that information or who we are. These are all sort of incipient kind of thoughts that we've been having about um, how this might work for those of us who can provide free access. Uh, but I think it should be part of the conversation and um, demands a real flexibility in how we think this through. We're all at sort of the, the baby um, stages of this. And um, so it's important that we get it right. Thank There's you. Some There's some questions. Hang on.